Good morning. Welcome to St. Anne's Church in Washington, D.C. Leading us in celebration this morning is our pastor, Monsignor Watkins. During the Mass this morning, we ask that those of you here in the pews with us, please keep your face masks covering both your mouth and your nose for the safety of all. And we ask that you sing only in your hearts. Please rise for our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come now to the second Sunday of Lent in these 40 days and 40 nights with the Lord in the desert of our souls, asking for every good gift of pardon, peace, and strength as we turn back to him and leave behind the sins that keep us from knowing, loving, and serving him with an undivided heart. Let us then confess our sins with humble hearts. Lord Jesus, 
tempted in the desert. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Christ Jesus, transfigured in glory, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. Lord Jesus, lifted up for sinners, Kyrie May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord, Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him. Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by its horns in the thicket. So he went and took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sea and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when said, I am greatly afflicted. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. 
I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. O Lord, I am your servant, I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all, how will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. Christ Jesus, it is who died, or rather, was raised, who also is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and honor to you. Jesus Christ, praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. From the shining cloud, the Father's voice is heard. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. 
Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. We all want to go home. We say, home for the holidays. Home is where the heart is. What is it about home that is so very, very special to each one of us? It's where we find family, dear friends, Shelter, protection, security, peace, joy. It's where we feel ourselves, most at home with ourselves and with others. Wherever that home is, think about that. Reflect on what home means for you. And it may mean very different things to different people now as we get older and we remember home as kids and what that experience was like. And maybe mom and dad have moved on, family and friends have moved away. We have a new job in Washington perhaps or we're going to school here and we've had to find a new home, a different kind of home. But whatever the dimensions or the experience of home, each one of us naturally wants to go home and be at home, where we belong. We feel most belonging at home. And home is where things are familiar. It's our routine. It's what we do. Everything around the home is there, we know it, we trust it. And it's very easy to lapse into a kind of easy-as-you-go feel at home. Go with the flow at home. It's not hard. It's not meant to be hard. It's meant to be easy. That's why we like it. It's so pleasurable to be at home. And it's hard to change. And it's hard to move away from home. Many of you know my story. My brother Ed is here with his wife Julie and their boys. But when we were growing up, mom and dad were in the Navy and over the course of their Navy career, they moved 37 times. Sorry, 32 moves in 37 years of his career. 32 moves, can you imagine? with six kids. I remember later years in my life, I would ask dad, why all the moving? Because we never had a home. I remember his saying to me in so many words, son, it's good training. It's good training, get used to it. That didn't make me feel very good. But I've learned there's some wisdom in what he was trying to say. You see, friends, over time, we learn, hopefully, and teach our children, hopefully, to move on from home. We don't like that. Psychologists tell us that the three greatest stressors in 
people's lives are the death of a loved one, divorce, and moving. They are great stressors. And moving means change. I've got to change my address. I've got to change my neighborhood. I've got to change the way I relate to people because it's a whole new home, a whole new way of living. Not easy. Well, all of that is true in the gospel today. Here we have Peter, James, and John on Mount Tabor. It is a beautiful place. Raise your hands if you've ever been to Mount Tabor. Magnificent, isn't it? The view high above the plains. And it is glorious. And they've now witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus. He has been raised up. There he is with Moses and Elijah. The cloud, we're told in this gospel, is always the sign of the divine, the clouds. And he is raised up before them. And they are just so at home. In fact, what does Peter say? Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let's commemorate this moment. Let's build three shrines, three tents. Do you know how much work that's going to take? Do you know how much time that's going to take? You don't build this in a day. This is going to be a long project, and Peter is very at home with his brothers, James and John. And they're going to get to work and commemorate this beautiful place and call it home. Now, that's all natural. I think if you were on Mount Tabor and witnessed the transfiguration of Jesus, and you saw Moses and Elijah in this beautiful setting, in fact, think of the most beautiful setting you've ever been in. That's one of them. You might want to move in. You might want to settle at home. Now, Mark's gospel today doesn't tell us what happens next. But after they come down from the mountain, Jesus says, it's time to go to Jerusalem. We're moving on, Peter. No, 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 says Peter. God forbid that anything should happen to you in that God-forsaken place. Because they're going to torture you. They're going to kill you. They're going to crucify you. And what does Jesus say to Peter in reply in that gospel? Peter, get behind me. Satan, you are not thinking as God. You're thinking as man. So stop it. What's the point here, friends? Oh, it's hard to move. It's hard to change. It's hard to be transformed, to be transfigured into the image and likeness of Jesus. But we learn spiritually to let go. To let go of what? Sins. That's the stuff that we accumulate over time it's the baggage we carry from home to home to home. How many of you have moved a lot, or maybe you haven't? But all that stuff, and it's still there. And you've been saying, oh, I'll get to that. How many years have you been saying, I'm going to get to that stuff in the basement? How many years have you been saying, I'm going to get to that stuff in the garage, in the attic? under my bed, in the closets. The stuff. Now, that's spiritually the sins. All that stuff that we carry with us and what weighs us down is the guilt and the shame that goes with that. So learning to let go, the beauty of our Catholic faith that it allows us this incredible encounter with the Lord in the sacrament of penance, the confessional, where we just simply dump it all. And there's nothing that a priest hasn't heard before, I can assure you. When I was newly ordained, I was shocked. After 31 years, huh, I've heard that before. So don't worry. 
I think most people are afraid of the sacrament because of their shame and guilt. How could I possibly say that? So embarrassing. See, that's what keeps us locked in the familiar of our own home. We don't want to change. We don't want to move. So sin kind of grips us in. It's really claws that keep us. And then we say over time, well, I'm not going to change. I can't change. We're falling into the same sins all the time. So what's the use of it? Well, that's again not as God thinks. That is as man thinks. So it would be good to think about what Jesus is saying. It's time to go to Jerusalem. See, Holy Week is just a few weeks away. So we're going to be going to Jerusalem now, closer and closer to his triumphal entrance on Palm Sunday, only five days later to be crucified by the same people that hailed him King of the Jews. Our Messiah, our long-awaited Redeemer, will watch all the drama. Now, it would have been easier for Jesus. In fact, these were the temptations in the desert during those 40 days prior to Jerusalem where Satan's playing on him and saying, no, don't you want to be your own God? And you can forgive yourself. You don't need God to forgive you. And is he going to hear your prayer anyway? Has he ever really done anything for you? You can do it for yourself. You don't need God. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps and do your own thing. See how that plays? I don't need the church. I don't need the sacraments. I don't need God. I don't need... I've got my own strength. Well, if we're so strong, then why are we so frustrated, confused, angry, impatient, unkind, uncharitable at times? Oh, it's not all bad, but there's a lot of bad in our lives. And it's good simply to acknowledge that. My doctor is here, Dr. Dan Young. And the first time I went to him, he did all the blood work and all the questions and all the analysis. And at the end, he said, is there anything else you want to tell me? Nope, nope, everything's fine. Right, Dan? And we do that. It's called denial. No, there's stuff I've got to work on with my body, but there's stuff I've got to work on with my soul. And it's so easy to simply go with the flow because that's where home is most familiar. I'm at home with myself. I don't have to change. But that's not what Jesus is saying. Now, he's not promising you a rose garden, maybe a garden with some thorns in it. That's for sure. But that doesn't mean he's not present to you as you are willing to change. Because the change in our faith is not just your own effort. It's his effort. We call that grace. Grace builds on nature. Okay? So his love, his mercy, he's saying, look, you don't have to do this alone. I can show you how it's done. And I can be there with you when you go through this change. And you'll never be alone. You'll never walk alone again. Don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of change. Don't be afraid of confessing your sins. Don't be afraid of getting cleaned up. Don't be afraid to move. And to move to a new home. Now, friends, all of this in light of the gospel, is a movement towards heaven, ultimately, which is why the transfiguration is the pledge and promise of heaven, the resurrection of the body. What Jesus is showing the apostles is, look, this is just a glimpse of what it's like, but you got to move with me. you got to change with me. Otherwise, you're going to get caught, and you can't move on. So everything in life is but preparation for death. 
and death is but preparation for life eternal. So the real change comes with death. That's when we are substantially changed. But before that, learning to let go helps us to prepare for a good death. Now Lent is all about dying to self, letting go. So what I'm preaching about is right within the whole context of the life of Jesus, who learned to let go. He was letting go of his mother. He let go of his foster father, Joseph. He let go of John the Baptist three years earlier. He was letting go of people, places, and things, so they wouldn't not consume him. It was so easy for Jesus to perform all those miracles that we read several weeks ago. But he said, I got to get away. So he went to the desert, and that's where he is right now, being tempted in the desert. So he can develop that strength that he's going to need in a few weeks to bear a cross. Out of immense love for all of us. Letting go. Letting God. So we come to a new home on this earth. It's a spiritual home. It's called the church. Welcome home, everyone. As one church, then, we stand to proclaim our ancient faith together. With one voice we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Peter exclaimed on the mountain, Lord, it is good that we are here. So confident of Christ's presence among us, by power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for his gifts of healing and transformation. For all those who serve the church as pastors and teachers, that they may guide us into clear light through the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those preparing for baptism and for reception into the church at Easter, that these 40 days may be a time of joyful discovery of God's great love for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners who are ill or recovering, for all who are imprisoned, abused, or suffering in any way, that they may be delivered from every evil, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to priesthood and consecrated life, that the church may continue to minister to the needs of God's people in their temptations and suffering, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ's peace, that they may be saved through the grace of Jesus our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God our Father will hear the prayers we now offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Because she prays for us sinners now and at the hour of our death, we invoke the Blessed Virgin's powerful intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Kindly be seated now for a few announcements. Please note that during Lent we have confessions available here at St. Anne's on Wednesday evenings from 7 to 8 p.m. It's part of the Archdiocesan program. The light is on for you. In fact, you can find the sacrament of penance at just about every parish, wherever you go. You don't have to come to me. You can go anywhere you want, but please make the good obligation as you prepare for Easter to avail yourself of that sacrament. You'll find it, if you haven't been to it in years, you'll find it very, very satisfying. Stations of the Cross are prayed here on Fridays during Lent at 11.30 a.m. and 7 p.m. And we have the first Wednesday adoration coming up this week. Hard to acknowledge that it's March 1st, tomorrow. So Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m. on the first Wednesday and first Fridays following the 12 noon Mass. If you'd like to receive weekly inspirational Lenten reflections by Bishop Robert Barron, please sign up for our parish emails on our website and we'll send those to you. Thursday, March the 11th at 7.30 p.m. here in the church, Tune in to our website for a special live-streamed Lenten concert with some of the musicians from St. Anne's, Grace and Aurelius Gorey, Natalie Plum, and more. Last went weekend and throughout the last weeks, we asked parishioners to make their commitment to the annual appeal for the Archdiocese. Please, if you haven't, you can do that still by visiting appeal.adw.org, and all this information is there for you. No donation is too small. The $14 million that is raised annually by the Archdiocese goes to support so many in need. This is money raised by less than 650,000 Catholics in 139 parishes. St. Anne's is one of those. We're linked with the Archdiocese, so it's not just about us. It's about all our brothers and sisters, and that is what makes us Catholic. We do it for them, not because they are Catholic. We do it because we are Catholic. And again, St. Anne's always relies on your contributions to maintain these live stream masses and to those who are at home. Please, again, make your contribution as you see the information on your screen. Know that you're united with us by bonds of love and charity that know no end. And we hope and pray these graces afforded to you by the mass come to you and eventually bring us back to home here at St. Anne's, hopefully soon.
Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. Of all his holy church. May this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory to show, even by the testimony of the law and the prophets, that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty, without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Alice Pincus Siskow, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Peter, James, John, Saint Anne, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the joyful hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the 
sins of the world, grant us Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before him now with reverence and fear. In him no sin is found. We stand on holy ground. Be still for the presence of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned. How awesome is the sight, how radiant king of light. Be still, for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. He comes to cleanse and heal, to minister his grace. No work too hard for him. In faith receive from him. Be still, for the power of the Lord is moving in this place. Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Bow down for the blessing. Bless your faithful, O pray we, Lord, with a blessing that endures forever, and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain that glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Right.
Christ upon a mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing. Let us, if we do to speak, with the saints and angels praise him. Let us praise him. Trembling at his feet, we saw Moses and Elijah speaking. All the prophets and the law shout through him the joyful greeting. Let us praise him. Swift the cloud of glory came, God proclaiming in the thunder, Jesus as his son by name. Nations cry aloud in wonder, let us praise him. This is God's beloved son, all and prophets fade before him, first and last and only now adore him, let us praise Oh, they may not use it. Yeah. 